Good morning, everyone. On Thursday, July the 1st, 2021, this is Chuck King from Ford City, Pennsylvania, bringing you the morning Bible study. And we are, we are talking today, as we have been the last several days, about suffering for the Lord and rejoicing in those sufferings. And we're going to look at Romans 5, 3 to 5. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the Apostle Paul teaches the Romans, and of course he taught this in all the churches, that we should exalt in our tribulations. Again, we realize this is not a natural response of our human nature, but it's a response of someone walking in faith and grace in the Spirit to realize that tribulations have a benefit. And we see it here that Testing and tribulations bring about perseverance, which is being able to make it through to the end successfully, enduring to the end. And then it also produces proven character, that we are established and proven in our holy character, the Lord working in us to make us like Jesus. He uses tribulations. And then it produces hope. Hope is future expectation of the fulfillment of every promise of, of God. And it says here the hope does not disappoint us because the love of God was given to us within our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God, the fruit of the Spirit, enables us not to be disappointed because we have the future expectation of the fulfillment of every promise, including our eternal resurrection from the dead. Let's go on here to Romans 8. Mm -hmm. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. You see how this dovetails with the last scripture that we just shared. Paul talks about his hope and hope with perseverance. He considered the current sufferings he was facing were not even worthy to be compared with eternal glory that we're going to receive. The whole creation waits for God to renew it, to to produce the end times fulfillment of his word. And we know that we are the first fruit of the Holy Spirit, those who follow Jesus. And we groan. And within wanting to be adopted as sons, the redemption of our body, which means the resurrection from the dead, that will end all of this suffering and testing and trials. But we hope for that. And that's future. It's it's something that we we know is coming, and but we don't see it. You don't hope for what you already have. You hope for what... God has promised in the future. It's future expectation. 
And so with perseverance, with endurance, we press on through the trials and testings in this life and eagerly wait for, for our resurrection from the dead. This is the attitude of the New Testament church. And continuing in verses 35 to 39, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. An Old Testament quote, but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice the central theme of the love of God that keeps us. Nothing can separate us from his love. None of these these, uh, tribulations and, and all the things listed here can separate us from the Lord. It is obvious from the teaching of the apostles that they expected trials and testings and all these things we've mentioned. But yet... They conquered overwhelmingly even through these things, pressing through, enduring them, because nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. This is the reality of being a disciple. And the final scripture here, 1 John 5, 4 to 5, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. When we are born again by faith and grace, we are victorious over everything we face in this life, in this world. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world by clinging to trusting in and relying on Jesus as the son of God by devoting ourselves to him we have the victory good word from the scripture today may the Lord bless and keep you we'll move on to another study tomorrow